Vineet Reja, Managing Partner of Classes Law. I'm here to talk about doing business in India and the ease of doing business in India. India has one of the most transparent, liberal and foreign direct investment regime amongst the emerging and developing economies. Any foreign investment proposed to be brought into India is governed by the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999 and the Foreign Exchange Management Transfer or Issue of Security by a Person Listed in Outside India Regulations 2017. Foreign corporate and individual investment, termed collectively as FDI, is permitted to be made in equity shares, fully compulsory and mandatory convertible debentures, and fully compulsory and mandatory convertible preference shares of an Indian company. Foreign direct investment may be rooted in a company in two ways either by subscription, that is direct contribution into the share capital of the company or by purchase, that is acquisition of securities from its existing shareholders. From a regulatory perspective, foreign direct investment may be made in Indian company through any one of the following two routes. Automatic route, where 100% FDI is permitted without approval but may be subject to certain sector specific conditions. For example, single brand retail trading, Marketplace model of e-commerce, construction development, townships, housing, and built-up infrastructure. Approval route, for example, multi-band retail trade, up to 51% FDI is permitted under the approval route. The business structures or forms of entities for doing business in India include a company, which may be a private or a public or a wholly owned subsidy or even a joint venture, a limited liability partnership, Offices by way of a branch office, liaison office or a project office or having a franchise agreement or distribution agreement with an Indian party. The government has taken many steps to enable business opportunities for foreign investors. This has resulted in India's rank in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business 2019 survey climbed to 77th place among 190 countries surveyed. Overall, investors were cautious in the first half of 2019. However, with the stable government coming in and the major initiatives in the pipeline, we expect increased interest of overseas investors. We have in our article on ease of doing business in India enlisted a number of initiatives taken by the government which has resulted in ease of doing business, such as the Code of Wages 2019 has been passed by the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha and received the President's assent on August 8, 2019. It shall come into force on such date as the central government may, by notification in the official gazette point. The code is expected to streamline the definition of wages by amalgamating four related statutes, the Minimum Wages Act 1948, the Payment of Wages Act 1936, the Payment of Bonus Act 1965 and the Equal Remuneration Act 1976. The Code on Occupational Safety, Health and Working Conditions Bill 2019 was introduced in the Lok Sabha on July 23, 2019. With the ultimate aim of extending safe and healthy working conditions to all workforce of the country, the code enhances the ambit of provisions of safety, health, welfare and working conditions from existing about nine major sectors to all establishments having 10 or more employees. The Personal Data Protection Bill 2018 The ever-changing legal and regulatory landscape within India, along with the enforcement of the General Data Protection Regulation in the EU, has given rise to the need for having such a law for protection of personal data in India as well. This paves the way for the birth of the bill which emphasizes on the need for increased safeguards vis-a-vis -vis personal data along with stringent penalties. The government is considering increasing the foreign investment limit in the insurance sector from 49 to 74% under the approval rule, as well as ease the norms for FDI in single brand retail trading, aviation and animation visual effects gaming and comics. External commercial borrowings framework has been amended recently. Proceeds of ECBs can now be applied towards repayment of INR loans away on onshore, where proceeds of such loan have been for, utilized for capital expenditure, meeting working capital requirements and general corporate purposes. For ECBs to be used for these end uses, certain minimum average maturity norms must be complied with. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code of 2016 has introduced new dimensions in insolvency in India. It is India's first comprehensive legislation of corporate insolvency. With all these reforms, we are moving towards India becoming a USD 3 trillion economy by FY 2020.